The anarchinol is the terminal part of the large intestine which is situated below to the pelvic diaphragm. It is 3.8 cm and its location is in the anal triangle of the perineum between the right and the left ischiorectal fossa. It begins at the anorectal junction and it passes downwards and backwards and then opens into the anal orifice into the natal cleft that lies in between the two buttocks. The anal orifice is about 4 cm. The relations of the anal canal the anterior relation is by the perineal body and in males the bulb of the penis and the spongy urethra comes into relation and in females the lower part of phasena lies anteriorly. The posterior relation is by the anocoxygeal raphe and the tip of the coccyx and also the fibro fatty tissue in between the anocoxygeal raphe and the tip of the coccyx. The lateral relation of the anal canal is by the ischiorectal fossa on the right and the left sides. Coming to the internal of the anal canal, it forms the upper part and the lower part. The upper part is endodermal in development and the lower part is ectodermal in development. The upper part is about 15 mm, the lower part is about 23 mm. The upper and lower part are divided by a pectinate line or a dentate line. The upper part. The upper part of the anal canal is about 15 mm and it is endodermal in origin. It contains of 6 to 10 anal columns. So these are the anal columns here which are also called as columns of Morgagni and the anal valves are also present which are also called as valves of Morgagni and also the anal sinuses. In the anal sinuses the ducts of the tubular anal glands opens. Coming to the lower part of the anal canal it is ectodermal in origin and 23 mm in length. The lower part is further divided into two by a white line or Hilton's line. So this line is the white line or the Hilton's line. This is the upper region of the lower part and this is the lower region of the lower part. The upper region is about 15 mm and the lower region is about 8 mm. The upper and lower region are divided by the white line of Hilton. The upper region is of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and it is bluish in color with the presence of dense venous plexuses. The lower part, it is pigmented and it is covered by true skin, sweat glands and the sebaceous glands. In adult males, coarse hairs are seen in the lower part. Let's talk about the sphincters. The anal canal contains of two sphincters. The internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter. So in this diagram, this is the internal anal sphincter and these three parts together constitutes the external anal sphincter. The internal anal sphincter is formed by the thickened circular muscle coat of the anal canal and they surround the upper two-third of this anal canal. So the upper two-third that is most of the part of the anal canal is covered by the internal anal sphincter. As you can note it in the diagram, the external anal sphincter have three parts. The deep part, superficial part and the subcutaneous part. The deep part surrounds the upper part of the internal anal sphincter and this deep part is continued with the puborectalis link and this puborectalis muscle is very important as contraction of this muscle increases the angle which is an important factor in the continence mechanism of the anal canal. And the superficial part lies at the lower border of the internal anal sphincter. It is elliptical in shape and anterior to it, it is attached to the perineal body. So in this diagram, you can note this is the superficial part and the subcutaneous part lies below to the internal anal sphincter which form a flat band which is about 15 mm broad and it has no bony attachment. The nerve supply of these sphincters, the internal anal sphincter is supplied by the autonomic nerve as it is of smooth muscle. It is involuntary in nature and the external anal sphincter as it is formed by the striated muscles, it has somatic nerve supply which is supplied with the inferior rectal nerve 
and the perineal branch of the fourth sacral nerve and it is under the voluntary control. The arterial supply of the anal canal, the upper part of the anal canal is supplied with the superior rectal artery, the lower part is supplied with the inferior rectal artery and the venous drainage. The upper part drains into the portal venous system by the help of the superior rectal vein. The lower part drains into the caval system by the help of the inferior rectal vein. The lymphatic drainage. The upper part drains into the internal iliac nodes whereas the lower part drains into the horizontal group of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. As they drain into horizontal group, it is also called as the watershed line. The clinical correlation. The main point is the hemorrhoid or the piles. The hemorrhoids are nothing but variceal dilatation of the submucosal and perianal venous plexuses. They are of two types, the internal and the external. The internal hemorrhoids are also called as the true hemorrhoids, whereas the external are also called as the false hemorrhoids. The internal piles form due to the saccular dilatations of the tributaries of the superior rectal vein and they are divided into primary and secondary based on the location of the piles. The primary piles occur in the area of 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock that is of the right posterior and right anterior positions. The piles occurring in remaining positions are called as the secondary piles. The external piles are the false piles. These are the saccular dilatations of the inferior rectal vein and these piles are very painful and they do not bleed during the straining process of the defecation. The fissure in anorectal canal, fissure meaning a cut, so these fissures are formed in the anal valves that is the valves of the morgagni due to the passage of the hard fecal matter they forms the fissures in the anal valves causing severe pain and the fistula in the anal canal. The fistula is an opening from inside to outside. The fistula is also the main clinical feature to remember after the hemorrhoids. So the fistula is mainly caused by the rupture of the abscess around the canal. This abscess opens spontaneously from inside to outside of the canal and the surface of this tract become epithelized. The most common form of the fistula is from the superficial part of the external anal sphincter. So from inside that is the superficial part of the external anal sphincter. This is the site for the most common fistula formation. So guys this is all about the anatomy of the anal canal. Its location, course, relations, inner part, sphincters, arterial supply, venous drainage, lymphatic drainage and the clinical aspects. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel and do check on my recent videos and playlists.